hey, you remember that story about the time that Elijah was taken up into heaven in a whirlwind of fire and chariots and all sorts of cool stuff? Um, it's a cool Bible story, but there's actually, there's there's depth to it. There, there's nuance, especially when you start to look at it through the eyes of Elisha, the, the prophet who is who is next. It's actually what makes these Sunday school stories really come alive. When you when you start to see them as more than sort of one dimensional characters, but but characters who who are real people who who have real fears and anxieties and worries and and hopes. Uh, as the the story starts out in Second Kings chapter two. Um, even as uh, they're starting to to warn us that Elijah will be taken up to heaven by a whirlwind, uh, Elijah is stopped and he's mocked uh, by by the people around him. That they say, "Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you?" That moment when you know that that person that you looked up to is is going away. That that moment when your grandpa, who you, you love and respect, is going to go on hospice that moment when you realize that the help that you've had for so long is not going to be there anymore. It, it's, it's a terrifying, utterly perplexing moment because there uh, it's the Lord's apparent will, but I sure disagree with it. And I think Elisha, as he starts to cross over the Jordan with Elijah, it is not just sad, but, but afraid for the future. And so it, it makes the thing that he asks for make a little bit of sense. Um, as they, they cross the Jordan after Elijah smacks it with a cloak and parts the whole thing and walks down the middle on the dry ground, reminiscent of Moses who crossed the Red Sea with all of Israel, Elisha asks him for a double portion of his spirit. And um, it, it just sort of sounds a little bit sort of greedy and, and childish until you realize that this is somebody who's afraid to face the world alone. And so if he has to do it because he sees himself as less than Elijah, he better bring more than Elijah to the table because he, he is so afraid that this is going to rest on him. And so what he is ultimately left with, though, is the promise, the, the, the witness of uh, somebody being taken up, uh, the, the witness of, of death being circumvented, destroyed, made nothing. The witness of the resurrection. Elisha gets to see the witness of the resurrection in the same way that you and I get to see the witness of Jesus in his resurrection. And there we have something to hang on to when we feel altogether too overwhelmed. Elisha, given a double portion of the spirit, witness to uh, Elijah being taken up into heaven, goes on to preach goes on to perform what miracles God would work through him, but above all else, just goes on to hope in the same victory over death that Elijah even now sees because he knows that this will ultimately be fulfilled in him who died, rose again, and was taken up into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for you for every time that you have ever felt alone and overwhelmed and to promise you that those who have been taken from you up into the heavens as they await the resurrection of the body, they are not gone. But you, in fact, get to join them in the, the, the eating and drinking of the body and blood of Jesus and the marriage feast of the Lamb that has no end. It is called the communion of the saints and we actually mean all of them. There, you are given a double portion of their spirit because the thing that, that gave them hope, you are joined at that hope. And there, you are joined at that victory and you have something to hang on to when all you can seem to count is loss. You get to recognize that loss loses because Christ is risen. And so even though Elijah is taken up, Elisha clings to the same Lord.